Hi, I'm Dr. Michelle Fiala of Ohio University in Athens. Thank you for joining me for part four of my e oboe lesson series. Today I will be talking about developing a musical vocabulary. Playing the oboe has many challenges, as we know. Often our minds are so engaged with fingerings, rhythm, tone production, and reeds that we neglect the reason we started playing the oboe, which was to make music. When I judge auditions, whether it's all state auditions, adult competitions, college auditions, anything, the players that really impress me are those who shape their phrases. Even if that player misses some notes, I'm willing to be very forgiving. But how do we begin to learn to shape our phrases? Every professional player has an internalized musical vocabulary that we have picked up over many years of study and listening. We have ways that we typically shape music, and then when we break those rules, it becomes even more interesting and surprising. Today I will talk to you about some of the things that could be a start to your musical vocabulary. You can experiment with these ideas and listen to more professional players who will give you new ideas. You can continue to expand your musical vocabulary for a lifetime. One of the first things I ask a prospective student to do is to play a slow D major scale. I listen for the connection between their notes. This connection is necessary in order to play lyrical solo lines, whether they are in your band music, orchestra, solo, or chamber music. I often hear students growing and fading away on each note of the scale, like this. Each note might be beautiful, but it's lacking connection. I then ask them to play the scale all on one note, but imagining the other notes. Once they can do this, I ask them to play the scale, but imagine they're still holding one note, and do the same thing with their air that they were doing when they were holding one note. Imagine a gossamer spider's web pulling the audience along, connecting all of your notes. A second thing you can practice in the same scale is the way you move your fingers. It's easy to forget what a connection your fingers have to your lyrical playing. If your fingers are too far away from the oboe, or if they're moved too, with too much force or don't move precisely together, it can interrupt the line you're playing. Listen to the difference in the D major scale if I play it two ways. In the first, I would move my fingers quite forcefully. I keep them very close to the keys and move them gently but precisely. The second way obviously has more connection and it will also help your technical playing when you keep your fingers closer to the keys and more relaxed. Now let's apply this to some real music. Music should always be going somewhere or coming away from something. It's never static. Find a phrase, a musical sentence, and pick one peak within it. Often there will be this arch shape to a phrase that the, uh, you pick a peak and there are notes that are always going toward the peak and then the rest of the notes are going away from the peak. Be aware that the peak is not always the highest note. Often it's something on a strong beat and often it has harmonic tension or wants to go somewhere. If you have the choice of two peaks, then pick the one that's later in the phrase. It's more exciting to build your audience up for longer and then finally let them down at the end. I'll show you this in the first of the Barrett 40 progressive melodies. In the first four bars, some students might pick the beginning of the second measure as the peak of the phrase. It would sound like this. delay the peak until the F at the beginning of the fourth measure, you could get something that has more musical excitement for longer. I prefer the 
second way. You can also try the same exercise we did with the scale with this piece. Play the entire phrase on one note and imagine the other notes, and then put the notes back together, and you'll feel the connection of the phrase more. Another guideline is that when you see the word crescendo or diminuendo, don't do it right away. Often students see the word crescendo and they're already getting soft, and then they find they have nowhere to go after that. Uh, same thing happens with diminuendos. And if you instead delay them for a little while, taper more gradually and have more taper toward the end, it, gets, it gives you the sense of always going somewhere. This happens at the end of this first progressive melody. In the last four bars, there is a diminuendo on the last two bars. The entire phrase lasts the last four bars, so I will play the entire phrase together. But in this time, I'm going to demonstrate what happens if you diminuendo too quickly and lose steam. Instead, I delay the diminuendo, taper gradually, and then have more taper at the end, it keeps the musical interest and tension up for a longer period. that builds all the way up to its last note or goes away from its first note constantly, but these arch-shaped phrases are very common. When playing long notes, they should always go somewhere, either toward the next thing or relaxing away from the last thing. The opening of the Handel Sonata in C minor that many of you may have played is a great example of this. That first long note really needs to go somewhere. to sit on the first long note and not move through it, it would be really boring. At the end of this movement, you have an example of a long note that you could enter strongly on and taper way up at the end. keeping your long notes moving, it creates interest. Another place where this applies is in repeated notes. Repeated notes could become very boring, but you can change the length of the notes. You can vary your articulation and you can vary your dynamics. Many of you may have played the Telemann Sonata in A minor before, and in the end of the second movement, you hear this. could be very boring if each one of the repeated notes was exactly the same. But if you keep moving through them toward the next thing, it creates musical interest and creates a line. I hope that you will play around with some of these ideas and try them in music that you perform. In addition to making music more interesting for your audience, these tricks can make music more fun for you to play. The subject of developing a musical vocabulary is a huge one, and I will continue this with my next EOBO lesson. I hope that you will enjoy me in future videos, and I hope that you will come visit me in beautiful Athens, Ohio. Please let me know if I can help you with your musical development.